welcome to training on how to use the MEI 1204W wedge bonder. What you're seeing now is actually an example of a wire bond being made. We're using gold thread on a gold contact. You'll notice that the needle just came down, impacted the thread, and it fires what's called a thermosonic pulse down the needle to melt the thread, then presses it down onto the gold contact to complete the bond. So we've just made an A bond here. And after an A-bond is made, the needle lifts back up, spools out more thread, and we're able to move the needle in position over another gold contact and to press it again down into that contact to fire a B-bond. And the needle comes down again, fires that bond, and you'll notice that the thread breaks away to complete the B-bond. And we have a complete electrical contact between these two gold contacts. And we're going to zoom in on that B-bond here. So you'll be able to see it with a little more detail. Your bonds should be about one and a half times wider than the thread, maybe even two times wider for a B bond. Now we'll review some of the wire bonder parts. First of all, you'll see the microscope there. You'll be looking through the microscope to verify the position of your needle and your thread in relation to whatever you're bonding to. The focus knob is just behind the microscope. These are some calibration knobs that will allow you to change the weight force and speed with which the needle comes down. You see here the needle, the clamp, the armature, and the gold thread. And here are some indication lights and a switch to open and close the clamp. Now if we come around to the front to look at the needle, you'll see the needle set screw. It's that hex screw coming right out of the front of the part that holds the needle. You can turn that to adjust the needle height or to put in a new needle if you need to. And right here you see the thread spooling over the top of the spindle down into the armature and through the clamp and through the needle. And if we come down here you see the micro positioner. Moving the micro positioner will move the position of the needle. Holding the black button will disable the clamp to allow you to make continuous bonds. And pressing the silver button will lower the needle and automatically make a bond. There's the power switch. And here's the workstage heat control. This allows you to adjust the temperature of the hot plate on which you place your sample. Here are the A bond power and time controls and B bond power and time controls. These allow you to adjust the power and time of the thermosonic pulse, which is fired onto the needle. Here's the heated workstage or bonding platform. You're going to place your sample on top of this. And notice that it also has two pieces of metal that you can fasten over your sample. Also on the bottom, there's a set screw, which you can turn to raise or lower the work stage. Shown here is the Z arm. You'll depress this lever to lower the needle. And once the lever reaches the bottom, the thermosonics will fire. And that will actually create the bond. Shown here are the A search, B search, loop, and reset calibration knobs. These knobs control the height of the needle during wire bonding. You shouldn't have to change these knobs, though. They should already be set the way they need to be. Now when you're getting ready to wire bond, you'll also want to make sure you have some tools available to you. You'll need a flathead and Phillips head screwdriver to clamp your sample down onto the work stage, tweezers and scissors to manipulate the gold thread and also to cut it if it gets too tangled, and a hex screw and some tweezers if you need to raise or lower the position of the needle. Now we'll talk a little bit about how to thread the needle. Here's a microscope image of a needle and some gold thread. You see the small hole at the tip of the needle. That's actually what you'll need to put the thread through. Here's a view of the wire bonder after it has been threaded. Starting with the gold thread, you'll see that the thread spools across the top of the spindle and then down into a hole in the armature. From there it goes down through a small metal eyelet to the right of the clamp there and then down through a small hole in the needle. When viewed head-on, the top of the needle should be in line with the top of the screw that's protruding from the right of the clamp. Here's a video of how to thread the needle. We'll first remove the right side of the clamp by turning the knob counterclockwise and pulling away gently. Then grab some tweezers so you can manipulate the gold wire. You'll first need a long straight segment of wire to put through the hole in the top of the armature. So here I am grabbing hold of the wire and I try to slide it through the hole in the top of the armature. As I do so, I move the tweezers a little too far to the left and I get a snag in the wire. If this happens to you, don't be afraid to just 
pull the wire back out and use your fingers to straighten it out. If you have a snag in it, you're never going to be able to get it through that hole. So I straighten it out and I've got my nice straight segment of wire. I poke it through there and you see it coming out to the bottom left. Now I'm ready to put the thread through the small metal ring to the right of the clamp there. This is a little more difficult than the armature. Once you get the thread through the ring, it has a tendency to bend or snag. So you'll just need to kind of force it through and then on the other side, try to grab the thread and pull it through. So I've got it through a little bit here and I'm trying to get a hold of it with the tweezers, but it's small, so small it's rather difficult. If your tweezers are bent, you're going to have a really hard time. Anyway, I managed to get it through there, and now it's time to thread the needle. You're going to have to have some patience the first few times you try this. Basically, you need to just stab the thread at the end of the needle and wait for it to snag on the hole there. You see it just snagged right there. And then you kind of move it around until it appears through the other side of the needle, and then very, very gently grab hold of it with your tweezers and pull it through. And now our needle is threaded. Replace the clamp by inserting it into the hole there and turning the knob until it clicks, and then just push it in to turn it to lock it in place. The needle is now threaded, so we're ready to make some A and B bonds. First step is to turn on the power by toggling this switch. You should see the power light come on, and also in the top left of the wire bonder, you should see the indicator lights come on. Also notice that the clamp switch is closed right now, so you'll want to open that, just toggle it up, and also notice that the clamp doesn't immediately open when you toggle that switch. It's still closed right now. On the left side of the armature though, there's a button that you can press. When you press it, you'll hear it click, and if you look at the clamp, you'll notice that it should now be open. Depending on what you're wire bonding, you'll also need to decide what temperature you want to set your heat stage at. Over at the left, you see the controller. You can toggle the temperature up and down using these arrows. I was wire bonding something that had some epoxy on it, and you'll want the heat stage to be about 20 degrees Celsius lower than the melting point of your epoxy. 50 degrees will general, generally allow you to make a gold wire bond a little bit easier. If you don't have epoxy, you might try something a little hotter than that for easier bonding. My power and time controls are also set. For A power, it should be somewhere around 5 or 6, and the time should be around 3. For B power, you might get up to 7 or 8, and have the time up to 4 or 5 or 6, depending on what works. Down here, there's a pedal. Depressing the pedal will allow the thermosonics to fire, although you shouldn't have to do this. Moving the micropositioner here will move the needle. You can see the move, needle moving as I change the position of the mic positioner. And here are the black and silver buttons again. Again, holding the black button will allow you to make continuous stitches or bonds, and the silver button will allow the needle to automatically depress and make a bond. I generally find that that doesn't work too well, and you'll want to stick with using the Z arm to depress the needle. So now I've clamped on a PCB, and I'm ready to try to make some bonds. These screws are Phillips head and flat head for some reason, they're not the same, so you'll need two different screwdrivers. My heat stage is set at 50 degrees, and we're looking through the microscope right now. I've already actually made a successful A and B bond. There's a small loop of wire in the center of the screen right now and we're going to try depressing the needle to make another bond. The needle comes down squarely on top of the thread, which is good, but it looks like it was too powerful. Something happened, and the thread just broke when I tried to bond it. We're going to do some troubleshooting to see if we can solve the problem of it not bonding. 
One of the things to check is to make sure your thread is going straight through the quartz pad of the clamp and then through the end of the needle. To do this, take the right side of the clamp off and then you can turn the spool back to pull the thread through just to make sure that it's going straight through that quartz pad. Sometimes it tends to hang below the quartz pad and then come back up through the needle. If that happens, you probably won't be able to get a very good bond. So I've fixed that and now the clamp is back on. We're ready to look back through the microscope. From the top of the screen, you'll soon see the needle coming down and then some thread hanging out of the end of the needle. There's probably a little too much thread there. You could reduce the amount of thread coming out by just very carefully turning the spool back. We bring the needle down, impact the thread, and though it flattens a little bit, we still don't get a good bond. If you're not able to make a bond, first you should try adjusting the A and B bond power and time, and the bond force. If this still isn't working, you might have to change your needle height a little bit. And to do this, grab some tweezers, put it on the needle, and grab the hex screw, unscrew the set screw, and then wiggle the needle down or up. So I've made some adjustments, and I've also changed the package that we're wire bonding to. I'm going to give it another try. You see the needle with a bit of thread poking out comes down, impacts the gold pad, thermosonics fire, and an A bond is made. It actually sticks, and some thread spools back out. We move the micropositioner back, move the needle back, and get it in position. We're ready to move the needle back down and attempt to make a B bond. I depress the Z arm, the needle comes down. Once it hits all the way down the thermosonic spire, the B bond is made and the thread breaks. So now we have a good contact between that top gold lead and the bottom gold surface. We're going to try making another bond here. Again, the needle comes down, contacts the thread, thermosonic spire. I'm just using the Z arm to do this. The thread spools back up and we move the micropositioner to move the needle back. You'll always need to move the needle straight back. You see the needle went a little bit to the side there. That's because I was holding the camera with my right hand and moving it with my left hand. Okay, now we're over another gold lead. The needle comes down. The thread is actually a little bit too far to the right here, but it still works and the thread breaks off. So we've got a complete A and B bond between those two gold leads. So that was a successful bond. Again, if you're not able to get a bond, first try adjusting the A power, B power. Increase them if the bond isn't sticking. Increase the time, increase the bond force. And if nothing's working, then you might try adjusting the needle height or Perhaps first try adjusting the screw in the bottom of the workstage to change the workstage height. I'm going to pull off the back casing of the wire bonder to show you some calibration marks that have been put there. These long gold rectangles that you see correspond to the position of the calibration knobs for dual weight, bond force, and speed. Also, there are some X's drawn, and that's where the wire bonder has been calibrated to previously. So if nothing is working and you need a place to start, you might try turning the bond force and weight so that the gold rectangles are in line with those X's and those lines drawn there. Generally, if the bond isn't sticking, you'll want to increase the bond power and bond time, as well as increase the dual weight and bond force. You shouldn't have to change the speed at all. If the needle comes down, and the thread breaks when it impacts, then you'll want to lower the bond force, lower the A power, B power, as well as A time and B time. And you just need to play around with these settings until you get a bond that works. When you're done using the wire bonder, go ahead and turn the power switch off. The power light will also turn off. And in the top left, you'll see the indicator lights turn off. The clamp will automatically close shut to help the needle to stay threaded the workstage heat controls and the bond power and time controls will also turn off. And the last thing to do is unplug the lamp from the power outlet. Thank you for participating in wire bonder training.